And I quote, hot take, Nintendo games are good entry level games for people, but I do not consider Mario, Zelda, Metroid, etc. to be particularly incredible franchises when compared side by side with competitors. Obviously, he offers no competitors, aka they're good games made for 12 year olds first and foremost. You know, I'm gonna go into this unscripted so that you can get my true raw thoughts on this. It's ridiculous, <laughs> simple as that. You know, it's always funny to me. It's always funny that the narrative behind Nintendo changes depending on how well Nintendo is doing. Do you remember how Nintendo was competing in the Wii U era, right? Nintendo was a competitor when they were losing. And then the Switch comes out and all of a sudden, even though Nintendo is making the same games as they made before, they're kitty. Therefore, they don't compete with my PlayStation and my Xbox. He says Nintendo games are good entry level games for people. Really? Can you explain what isn't an entry level game? Can he qualify that statement at all? Actually, you know, I go back and I think about the praise that Nintendo has gotten from other developers, very big developers, one off the top of my head from software who says, we've been all learning a lot from Nintendo. I think about the charts that Nintendo gives out during their financial briefings and meetings where they show the demographics of the people who play Nintendo Switch and it's leaning in the 20s and 30s and 40s pretty heavily. Yeah, kids do play Nintendo games, which is completely fine. See, there's a huge difference between being family friendly and being for kids only. And this is something that the competitors are very lackluster in. This is something that PlayStation and Xbox have not quite figured out how to do. They don't understand how to make legendary franchises that last the test of time. They can't produce their own Mario. They can't produce their own Kirby. They can't produce their own Splatoon. Or believe me, they would. You see, they're lacking the one thing that makes it possible for you to create a mascot that lives on forever. They are lacking the philosophy behind game development and what it takes to make innovative and memorable games that will last the test of time. They do not think about game development the same way Nintendo does, and they probably never will. Therefore, they cannot replicate the results that they are so desperate to replicate. I find it incredibly telling that he's not specific at all, except for on the Nintendo side, and he specifically picks three franchises that are known to absolutely wreck Xbox and PlayStation when it comes to the Metacritic scores. Yet, when he says side by side with competitors, he can't list a competitor because he knows, you know, this is a psychological thing. This is a thing to protect himself from the inevitable pushback that is going to happen if he were to name some franchises. It's a defense mechanism. He knows Nintendo fans would get in his ass if he were to be specific and name franchises he thinks are better than Mario, Zelda, and Metroid. However, he doesn't name any. Now, when he says they're good games made for 12 year olds, I need that qualified. What does that mean? Nintendo has tons of games that are made for anyone, right? Splatoon, a game that's incredibly family friendly. It has lots of colors and little squid kids. However, it's a deep and fun and masterclass and well-designed experience. I would absolutely love this young man to hop on Splatoon and for him to dominate. I would love to see him climb the ranks and for him to just easily defeat these 12 year olds out here. No, he would struggle and he would have to work just as hard as you would have to work to become a competitive in any other shooter, if not harder. All of Nintendo's games are made for a low entry level, but they are designed to be hard to master. At least they're competitive games. So are you telling me he's just going to jump into Smash Brothers and go out and beat some of the best in the world? All right, bet. Let's go get Mewtwo King and put him up against this guy. I mean, it is a game made for children, right? Are you telling me he couldn't beat someone in a game made for children? It should be nothing for him. It's not going to happen, right? But that aside, it's funny how he leaves out some Nintendo games like we don't have The Witcher 3 on the Switch. Like we don't have Doom Eternal on the Switch. Like we don't have Bayonetta or Fatal Frame or all of the crazy weird Japanese erotic games that you can go buy on the e-store at any time you know what this really is 
is it's a defense mechanism from the competitors to Nintendo trying to justify why they're not fans of video games. Because if you don't play Nintendo games, the games that live on the top of the Metacritic list, the games that are universally praised by everyone who plays them, well, you're simply not a real gamer, you're a fan. You see, when a game comes out and is critically acclaimed, and millions of people love it, and they tell me it's such a good game you have to play it, I'm gonna play it. I played Elden Ring. I bought Hogwarts Legacy. I got Dead Space. I have a Steam Deck. I have a PC. I have an Xbox Series S. I played the Fallout franchise. I've played Skyrim and other Elder Scrolls games. But he will not play Nintendo games because he has an agenda, and his agenda is hyping up whatever company it is that he stands for and that he likes. It's funny, I myself have a huge bias towards Nintendo, but I am always open and honest with my bias. I am never gonna get on here capping and pretending like I'm not a huge Nintendo fan. Completely open and honest with it. But you'll never ever catch me capping like this, saying that because Call of Duty is so good and great, it's only for the lowest common denominator casuals. Everybody can enjoy Call of Duty. You don't have to be a super casual to enjoy the game. Everyone can enjoy it. It's a game made for everyone, just like Mario, Zelda, and I don't know what he means about Metroid. Metroid's pretty hard. It comes off as him having no idea what Metroid is or have never played it before. It comes off as somebody who is jealous and upset that Nintendo keeps feeding us and we're getting fat and they are starving over on that side. I don't know what it is, but he sound hungry. Ladies and gentlemen, all this is, is it's a showcase of the vitriol, hate, and disdain people who aren't Nintendo fans have for Nintendo unjustifiably, right? Whenever a game or a company or something does better than your company, people get incredibly upset at this because they just can't understand it. They can't understand why this little tablet is, is on everybody's mind, why this little tablet is on the top of the chart, why everybody's buying this little tablet. It's not as powerful as their PS5 or their Xbox Series X and they can't handle it. We are supposed to be in the next generation of gaming and the Switch is still dominating. Why? <laughs> All it does is show their insecurity and this tweet is a perfect example of that. Somebody who obviously does not enjoy good video games. Listen, I just wanted to come on here and talk about this a little bit. It was heavy, heavy on your boy's heart. Your boy had to talk about it. And uh, I thought I would just spew and talk into the mic for a few minutes and see what you guys thought. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button until we see you in the next one. This has been Jeff with Nintendo Vault. And look, <laughs> I'm out of here.